Major Slack Videos. Hey, welcome back to Major Slack Videos here for stuff for easy Elden Ring gameplay. Time for part two of my How to Own Stormville Castle Run Marathon Run through Stormville Castle to through the main section of Stormville Castle to um, completely clear out all the enemies in one go so that we can have a good look around. So glad I did this. This is going to serve me. This knowledge is going to serve me for years to come. Having clear understanding of exactly how Stormvale Castle is laid out. First thing we're going to do in, the, in part two is open the back door to the list side chamber. And this is what you're going to do. Coming back from the troll from Godric's the Grafted's front door, you're going to come up on this ledge just like I did. Double back. And you're going to make a jump up here. Shimmy around here, you gotta make a little bit of a difficult jump there. But it's not that risky because it's not that far down. And in this area, first of all, there's a Stormhawk. Uh, don't go there for a slack. No, 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 no. Bad slack. No. Attaboy. Yep, yeah, down here first. Yeah. There is a Stormhawk and an armored exile. Let's call him an exile knight. The Stormhawk is the highest priority because if they both get loose on you, you're dead. So the Stormhawk is on the right and the armored exile is on the left. So you got to start target the Stormhawk and we're close enough that um, a mighty shot with a bow should one shot the Stormhawk, unlike previously where we were too far away. You know, the farther the way, the less damage you do. So this is one shot it. There we go. So now we can get a backstab on the Stormhawk. Exact same routine as the other knights. Backstab, gravitas, lock on, strong attack, and attack. Backstab. Gravitas, lock on, strong attack, and... Looks like simply a strong attack was enough to finish him off. And get our lump of flesh for what it's worth. <laughs> oh boy, a lump of flesh! Yeah, just what I wanted. In this area... I don't know what I'm doing here. We're gonna find these um these rock throwing buggers. They're the kind of enemy that um you tend to underestimate in Elden Ring, and they chip away at your health, and before you know it, you're half dead and fumbling around for a potion, and then you're dead. And you're like How the hell did that that happen? You know, you're like, what? Yeah, it happens all the time in Elden Ring, you just underestimate some enemies. There's a couple of pickups ahead on the right in these two little alcoves. This, this is fairly safe. Trina's Lily here. And in the next cubby hole, something there. That's just me being extra extra careful. So I'm, I'm doing this all from memory, eh? I've got my laptop closed. Gamer Slack has got the laptop closed. He's doing this in, entirely from memory. Hurry up, Slack. Here come the authorities. Okay, there's a guy around the corner just to the right. So I'm going to try to lock on and ambush him if I can. Oh, that was a good idea, Slack. Yeah, right. Pebble that guy first. <laughs> and I missed the lock on, and I got him. Down in here, here's where all these rock-throwing buggers are. They're all asleep though. This is another one of those areas where, you know, 
you look at it at first glance it's like oh there's nothing going on here and it's like a whole bunch of sleeping guys who kind of sort of look like dead bodies you're not sure you know because you know throughout the game you got like dead bodies posed up against the wall that look exactly like you know some enemies that are sleeping so now I'm taking a close look that truly is there's about like half a dozen enemies in here it doesn't look like it but there is there's three right here and there's three over on the other side of the room So this is a job for the Glintstone Arc. After I help these guys with the longbow, the ones down below I'm going to do the, the Glintstone Arc. one left there and just finish him off with an ambush melee attack. Run up, jump, strong attack. Or just walk up and strong attack. <laughs> Jumping strong attack. Yeah, boy slack. Yeah, that's what I do. And this guy, he caught me with my pants down. I got no shield. This would be the best way to deal with him. He's already doing damage by throwing those rocks. So I'm just trying to buy just enough time to get my shield on in the menu. Okay, so now I got him. Guard counter. And down he goes. I'm so surprised when watching melee walkthroughs how few people use guard counters, if at all. I, I don't think I've ever seen one yet, and I've watched a few guard uh, like a lot of melee walkthrough videos. I've yet to see one player use a single guard counter, not one. I I I don't understand it. It's that's like for me. That's the core. I mean, I'm working on a melee build on my PS4. That's like the core of my build. Of my gameplay. It all starts with, can I do a guard counter? Yes or no. You know, Is he going to plow through it and wipe out all my stamina and break my poise? Yes or no. If yes, then, you know, another solution. If no, enemy is dead. It's that simple. It all starts there. This is a really finicky pickup. This is like, the, I'm sure the game does this on purpose. It's like, makes you risk your very life trying to get this. It's a golden rune, it's rank 5. Pretty sure that's worth about 2,000 runes right there. Okay, so now if you look... That'll lead uh, down to, we're not going to see, you see a little sparkly thing in the distance there. We can't go there yet because that makes, that's a, like a big commitment. We can't commit to that yet. But here is the back door to the lift side chamber, side of grace, which was locked before and now we just opened it. Okay, so that's how you open that. You got to go through everything that I just did since the beginning of the video. And that's how you get that open. So now... The ulcerated tree spirit boss fight is easily accessible from the lift side chamber, side of grace. So we don't have to worry about that. We can just simply fast travel there and go do that. So it's not really necessary to clear that area. It's kind of like a, a peripheral, if you will. Now is the omen that... I just looked it up exactly what is the ogre and his little rottweiler. <laughs> the rot dog. His name is Omen. The Omen Ogre. 
and definitely got to take him out because right there is the statue. There's the Rottweiler, what I call the Rottweiler. A couple of glint blades should easily take care of the Rottweiler. That's the name I made it for those little, those rot dogs that if they bite you, they'll give you scarlet rot. Now, five glint blades will easily kill the Omen Ogre, but I'm unwilling to spend 60 FP on that if I can possibly take him down with um, fire pots, which I've done before in practice runs. Took him down entirely with fire pots. It takes a little dancing around and it's worth the risk. There is just spying the Stormhawk in the distance for him, just kind of making sure that, you know, getting a clear idea of how much of an elbow room I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take him down with fire pods. It didn't work and I ended up having to spend a couple of glint blades anyways. But at least I saved some glint blades and I, I took some heat. Huh. Unintended. I guess here we go. Now the idea is just dance around. And he always gets staggered when you throw a fire pot at him, so you could theoretically stun lock him if you have enough fire pots. And he doesn't dodge it because it's, sometimes he'll dodge your fire pots. And I'm using this kind of like contraption here up there to dance around and keep him like, you know. Kid, this is exactly what I wanted. That's exactly what I wanted. And I was hoping he would come down that side, but he didn't. He went around the long way. It's like the game knew. Haha, <laughs> I see that. I see the dodger. And now, um, I've, I'm out of fire pots, so I need to get some distance so that I can, um, pile in a couple of glint blades. Just in time. <laughs> Just in time. <clears throat> Where'd he go, Slack? Yeah, spank that ass. Alright, so it's uh, the Stormhawk right there. He just saw it right, right there, right above Prisoner's head there. He's next. Rock sling all the way because there's lots of room for a rock sling. Mine it up good, make sure you don't screw up. And that's a hit. And another one up ahead, same deal. There's lots of room for a rock sling. And that's a hit. Then I underestimated this exile with um, a crossbow. Slack, the only way you're gonna do this is fight fire with fire. Yeah, the boy, take out your crossbow. Yeah. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Am I thinking of going toe to toe with this guy? I kind of forgot what I did. I recorded this two days ago. I am. See, I knew it. Yeah. Much better idea. 
It's so cool though, this like just he destroys your cover. And that was just me spamming the arrows, that's why I feel kinda like once I lost the lock on after the enemy died. It's like shoot every which way. Okay, there's a guy down there, right behind the barrel there. I'm going to do a running jump attack to ambush him. And an extra attack to finish him off. I believe this is five remotes. No, it's a smithing stone too. And this should be pretty clear up to um, Nephili's room. So now let's pick up the golden seed. At the golden tree, up there's Nephili's room. And the tree is Lily. And there's also a smithing stone in this little alleyway off to the left there. I forgot to get that. I think I get it at the end. There's a troll and these two his two his two minions are still dead. Let's go talk to Nephili. So that we can en enlist her help with the Gagar the grafted boss fight. You were a fine warrior. Your only mistake was your choice. In this pickup here, you have to bash your way through the table in order to get the pickup. To a higher place. Well, who do we have here? Tarnished, are you? Clearly not one of Godric's lot. I am Nefeli Lu, tarnished and warrior like you. I'm here by decree of my father. How utterly repellent this is. This grafting of Godric's ill befits a lord. He's tainted the very winds. If you intend to challenge Godric, I ask you call upon me. The winds run foul with his deeds. I'm certain father would permit me aid the fight. Apologies. But I've idled long enough. As fellow tarnished, we must each follow our own guidance. Down whatever road takes us to the throne of Elden Lord. Alright, and then when she says apologies, that's her last, um, her dialogue is exhausted. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but, um, according to the wiki, when you use a summon, like, when you summon help in these boss fights, like, for example, in with the market, the fell boss fight, I had Rogier help me. And in the upcoming Godric, the boss fight, I'm going to have Nephili help me. I'm going to summon her. It actually, according to the wiki, I haven't actually verified this, but according to the wiki, it increases the boss's health. So there is a, a downside to having a summoner. Like, to summon help. I always feel it's worth it, though. The more cannon fodder, the better. Now, that statue laying down that you saw, like, the big sparkly thing there, that's another one of those smithing stone statues that can only be broken open by a troll. So that's where we're leaving the troll alive. We're going to do that at the very last. We're going to sucker the troll to come rushing down and break through that statue so that we can get those smithing stones. And now what I'm doing is basically last call. Because now we're going to return by the elevator to the um, uh, castle rampart tower side of grace hang on I got a sneeze coming on oh excuse me yeah this is last call because um, we're gonna return to that side of grace we're not gonna rest just gonna return there and then start working the northeast side of the castle at which point there will be a point there will be a point of no return and the only way we'll be able to get back to um, the courtyard is to fight our way up the ramp. But it should be mostly clear. I made a mistake and I, I left one guy alive, one key guy alive, but I mostly cleared the ramp. The, 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 the ramp. Okay, so that um, 
He just followed my footsteps there. I just went back through the craft to the Scion boss fight room to the elevator, which leads you back. I'm just showing you right now to the Rampart Tower side of Grace. Don't rest. I was just doing that like I was just showing the on the map just for demonstration purposes. So we're continuing the marathon. And upstairs here, there are two guys. Normally, I would take them out with Glintstone Pebble, but once again, I'm like being real, real cheapskate with my FP, so. So that guy goes down with the Glintstone Pebble, and this guy I'm going to take down with a bow. Normally, that guy there that I just spent three Glintstone three pebbles on, usually he goes down with one because it doesn't have the shield up. But that's only if you start directly from the Rampart Tower side of Grace. But since I didn't, he's like already activated and moving around and patrolling so he's like, you know, couldn't couldn't take him by surprise. Here you could just like keep popping out shots and like dodging back and forth. You gotta dodge his shots. Nice. <laughs> And then you can jump over the wheel, which is the best way I find to jump over this part because it's a pick up across the way there. Jump over the wheel. And there should be throwing daggers if I recall correctly. Yeah, five throwing daggers. Alright, we're gonna take out the go out the back door and circle all the way around. Out front there are six exiles to deal with. Five of them are sleeping and one is like just kind of standing on the the platform oblivious or will eventually be. I would start with this guy right here. It's the safest guy to take out without alerting anybody else. And once again I was just spamming the uh the, the bow so I shot off it. An extra shot after the lock I lost the locker. Um that guy's next, definitely. I wouldn't risk, uh, if you're like following this walker, I wouldn't risk using the bow on him. You want to take him down instantly, so I went with the glintstone pebble. This guy in the corner, he's isolated, so we can safely take him down any way we like without having to use our FP. So I'm going to go melee, so I figure I can ambush him. So I'll go over this corner here, and I'm going to run in and do a jumping attack. And whoop. That took him out very nicely. Next, there's three more guys. Two are sitting together. You can use the glintstone arc on them. They're perfectly set up for that. The one off to the the left. Um, we can save some FP by using the bow on him. So do the one on the left first because the other two are not going to notice. That took some heat there. These two are definitely a uh, glintstone arc, get them both one shot. There you go, nice. That's random, and this is scripted, let's pick up here. These, this is golden rune. Okay, so at this point, you're going to line yourself right up with this ledge here, jump across. You could also use the bags, but I find that a little finicky, so I prefer this method. And then run across here, and then turn to the left, and you make a running jump across to the other ledge across the way. It's kind of risky, <laughs> but it's it's easy. It's not like you can barely make it. There's lots of room to make it. Just make sure you do a running jump. And jump over that, and down here to get, I believe it's a stone sword key. If I recall correctly, yes, I did. Uh, it is indeed. Now, just below here is a Stormhawk waiting to ambush you. See that bottom of the screen there? There he is. So, we got him by the nuts. We're just going to jump in, use the Gravitas skill, which is perfect for bringing down flying creatures. Jump down, Gravitas, whammo. He drops to the ground and whack him. Make sure you do a lock on right after you do the gravitas so that as soon as he is brought to the ground you can start whacking away at him before he takes flight again and there's a gesture that's a scripted pickup we're eventually heading across there but I want to get on top of this little wall here if you will and then use this 
to get some elevation to jump across to this ledge here. <laughs> it looks incredibly risky, but yeah. And follow it all the way around. This is all for a couple of lousy smithing stones. Risk risking life of them for... At least they're smithing stones too. You know, for all that trouble, you figure they give you some kind of like gold-plated, god the grafted killer or something. I don't know. <laughs> but no, just a little jump loot. All right, so next we're gonna go up. Um, I think I briefly considered just taking a taking in the view. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, that's enough slack. Back to it. Back to business. Okay, and you're gonna go up this kind of like this tilted over chimney here. Use that to get up. Jump up here and jump up here. In the next area, there are four guys. Three of them are nicely grouped together, so we can use the glintstone arc on them. What you gotta do is position yourself correctly, though, so that they don't notice. So don't go up here yet. Instead, go down to this end. Then we're gonna jump up and immediately crouch. So they don't notice, target them, and then use the glintstone arc. Should get all three. Nice. Another guy over here. He's all by his lonesome, so don't waste FP. It's just some kind of melee attack. Oh, yeah. Good thinking, Slack. Since I have the hook claws, which have the life steel fist on it, and he's asleep, this is a golden opportunity to recover some health. Yeah, good idea. I forgot about that. Yeah, that really came in handy. I finished the run with half a half a health bar and a full FP bar. So, had I not had these, uh, you know, health coming in from the crimson, the assassin's crimson dagger talisman and the hook claws, they would have made it. So there's nothing noteworthy up here, it's upstairs on, you have to take the ladder up, it's on the other side. Right here. And this will take us to um, the Claw Talisman, which enhances your jump attacks. I think it gives like 20% uh, extra damage, maybe 10 or 20% extra damage when you do a jump attack. I never really expect much out of these guys. There you go. And you can actually make the jump across to the other, like a running jump. That's actually doable. There you go, there's the Claw Talisman. Enhances jump attacks. Jump down here is the safest place to jump down. And then. Down here. Okay, so now we're going past the number of points of no return. In here is an exile and a knight. Things went completely sideways.
the original plan was pebble the the exile and then do the old uh, meteoric blade um, backstab grabs his strong attack combo or is this the one I'm going to use the pebble and the rock sling I think that's exactly what I'm, I'm mulling over at this point what exactly to do and I'm just verifying how much like backup elbow room I have <laughs> not very much Another strategy that works on this guy is if you target the knight first with rock sling, sometimes a couple of rock slings will take them both down. But I decided not to risk that. So I'm going for um, just shooting the exile with the, the bow. Waiting for him to come around the corner. I'm really lucky that Knight didn't get activated. Okay, taking one of my precious flasks. Just gonna peek around the corner and see what's up with the Knight. I know he's calm because that, otherwise he would have come around the corner and tried to kill me by now. There he is. So. This is ideal, or one would think. <laughs> what I'm going to attempt to do is a backstab grab to his strong attack combo, except the backstab didn't work. And now, see how see how close he took me. To, it's like I have just a smidge of health left, and it's on. So I'm getting some distance. That's why I've checked my elbow room before. And I knew that was going to work. I know that looks really panicky, but I knew I just if I doubled back and rolled through whatever attack he was doing, it would work. And all that just to get enough distance to throw the rock sling, which I got off the second one I got off just in time. Now, here, um, I completely forgot about another exile across the walkway. So I just started sauntering across. -da -da. I was looking like, you know, admiring my handiwork. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'm a badass. I'm such a badass. It's, it's like there's nobody as badass as me. What? Hold up here. <laughs> it's like. I did not mean to waste pebbles on that guy. I could have easily gotten him with uh, the bow halfway across the walkway. So now I'm cursing myself for forgetting that. Every little bit of FP that you have to waste. So that pickup up there is uh, Nomadic Warriors Cookbook number 10, if I recall correctly. Yep, I forget what it does. of exiles here. This is exactly what I wasn't um this is what I had planned. Mm. 
Now, this second walkway, these guys here, these are the badasses that are preventing you from coming up the suicide route. This is where it counts. Now, we got him by the nuts. All we have to do is hook up the crossbow and pick them all off. Except, I forgot about one to my left, to my extreme left. This guy's first because he's priority number one because he could potentially reach us, this guy in the ballista. See? <laughs> it's now it's on. It is on. Things are heating up. No worries though, because you can jam yourself right up against the edge of the wall right there. I don't think it's going to do this. Yeah, you're going to have to either stand up or go closer. Stand up, Slack. Stand up. There we go. He's a learner. Had a boy. There we go. <laughs> nice, that took a half its health. Let's get a hell of an army. And it's funny, you can actually hear the guy that I missed off to my left. You can hear him fumbling around the bushes. I'm not even sure if you can reach him from the walkway. It seems that you could. If you can't, then he he has a perfect death rate on everybody. Okay, so those two guys are down. That guy might be a little too far away. He actually got me. And you see that? Once again, just uh, just within an inch of my life. See how incredibly dangerous this run is? So I'm now taking my wondrous physic emergency health. It's time. And I killed him. I'm 
erroneously satisfied that I've wiped everybody out, but I did not. There's a guy right there. I, I don't know if you can see him in the video, but he still exists. That guy is dead, I believe. Yeah. And now... We're back where we had the other guys. Like all the ballistas aimed at the front gate. So we're back at the same spot here. And this is the point of no return. There's no ladder to get back up. So now I'm committed. Totally committed. And there's a whole bunch of enemies on the road that you can't really reach. You could maybe reach them from uh, up here. But there's some off to the the left, the far left. They're hidden in the bushes and everything, and it's just it's really hard to get them. But you got to get down up close and personal to get them. Preferably with fire bombs. Slack. Fire bombs is an instant kill. We got two there. That's, that's a good one. Two for one. The fire pots rock. Totally rock. Okay, so you can tell what I'm thinking here. I got the hook claws on again. I want to sneak up on someone. Use the life steel, life steel fist skill. Get some health back. Good thing I came back for strategy purposes because I missed that pickup. Okay, so we can get these guys from this position here. Super, super careful because I cannot afford to lose any more health. I'm ready right now. I'm just thinking, just die already. Huh. 
Nice try, Slack. That's what I would have done. Okay, so there's nothing left to do but to get up close and personal with these guys. I gotta go down there. If for anything at all, just with some better visibility. Okay, so we got a guy in a ballista there. And then another guy there. I don't know if you could spot him. I'm really familiar with all these positions, so I knew I know right away where they are. Here the best thing to do is to is to hug the left wall. It's good cover there. You can sneak right around. Sometimes get right up on them. So that miss caused him to turn around. cover here. And get behind this hedgehog here. Nice, that's exactly what I would have done. I can't believe he survived that. Right now, my heart is in my throat, like when I was doing this run. My heart was in my throat. I was like, my heart was like, I was pounding away. I was like, just, just freaking out. White knuckle terror. Because I'm so close to the end. clear it out all those guys. I think there's one more left way down at the end here. And this, I'm assuming, <laughs> is clear. I assumed wrong that I left one guy on a ballista of all things alive. And you're gonna see. So here we go with the uh, clawed fist thing again, or may? Oh no, I'm just gonna do a backstab. Backstab is more reliable than the claw fist. 
the hook claws with a uh, light fist steel on it. Probably do the same thing on this guy and be back to full health. <clears throat> Pardon me. And be in really great shape to finish it off. There, full health. Beautiful. So everything's clear up to the gate. Gonna activate that Sight of Grace, open the gate, get all the goodies there. Now, at this point in my mind, the run is done. In my, I'm, I'm positive that I got everybody. And you hit this lever to open the gate. Once again, don't rest at that side of grace. And there's another pickup around the corner here. For what it's worth, I mean, you know, like I said in the beginning, and a lot, a lot of these pickups, even though they're scripted, are like, you know, total chump loot. That's like for the guy who's, who's who managed to get up to this point in the game and, and said, Oh, wait, you can wear armor? Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> and here is the original, original, uh, let me show you. Stormville main gate. It's the one you encounter right after beating Mark of the Fell Omen. So here we go, 52 minutes in, and I'm feeling uh, as pleased as punch with myself because you know, in my mind, it, I did it, I succeeded. The Lion Guardian boss fight, you're gonna leave till the end there because I'm just gonna sneak around and activate the side of grace that's right nearby, and then we can just use that side of grace as a jumping off point to do the Lion Guardian fight. Lion Guardian fight, which I'm just pointing out right now, and he is just off to the right of that doorway. I'm going to show you right now. Or not. I'll show you. I, Anyways, I'll show you later. So here we go. Everything's fine. All I have to do is just jump up this series of rock ledges here to get up to the top to get some final pickups where the uh, ballista guys are. And... Whammo Frisbee. I just practically shat my pants when that happened. I I, I was just like, what the fuck? What the hell's going to say? And then I was like, oh my god, I am so screwed. I am so screwed. He's got good cover. I don't know where he is. I don't know how the hell I'm going to take him down. I thought, I thought I took the, these guys all down from high ground. And I'm like, oh my god, 55 minutes down the drain. How the hell am I going to get out of this? But I did. There he is right there. And I managed to tweak my position just right so that I could get a shot on him, but he couldn't, he couldn't get me. Took a lot of careful tweaking. As you can see, I can't endure too many more of those. Like, maybe, maybe one more shot, and then the next one will be out. I'm dead. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get in between these shots. I'm trying to time it, just run up and do, like, shoot from the hip, because I'm locked on, right? And I keep getting the timing wrong with like reloading and everything, so I finally had to. And I think at one point he actually abandoned the ballista for some odd reason. I think I actually nailed him.
What a predicament, eh? <laughs> stand up, Slack. Just quickly stand up and shoot him. Just a little lower. And that's it. See? And then now I'm down to it. Oh, I have one health flask left. Okay. <laughs> there, you see? He, he abandoned his ballista for some odd reason. There we go. Whew. To the bitter end. Now, I own Stormvale Castle. Ha ha ha, what a fight! I'm just drinking it in. <laughs> Do a victory dance. Now I'm gonna make this jump. And I suck at the Super Mario stuff, so I, I blew it. Had to go around and try it again a couple times, I think. That's a nice piece of weaponry, the Arbalist. Let's pick up on the other side there, Slack. Don't forget that. Gotta jump across again. Trina's Lily. Now all that remains is the troll. I'm <laughs> just giving the guy a say. Fuck you! You make me shit my pants. Just sticking around, kind of like, you know, reveling in, uh... Oh yeah, I forgot about this painting. I believe this is pointing to a lo location in 
Northern Weeping Peninsula. You go there and find the exact spot where that painting is done, like what the scene that that painting is depicting, and um, there's a reward there. So that's it. All that's left is the troll, and I had to, I had to drain the weasel. So <laughs> what I did was I had to, I exited the game, and um, then I came back and did the troll fight. So that's where you're gonna see a little uh, jump cut here. I just like there you go. So I was jacked up on caffeine and I was like just drank a big coffee and I was like okay, I got really gotta let one go. Okay, so here's the dealio. You gotta sucker the troll into running over the statue to break open the statue so we can get all those luscious smithing stones. And I'm right down to him now down to my last health bar and one um, FP flask. So I decided to go with the uh, Bloodhound's Fang. The idea was to try to bring him down to, uh, like, whittle his health down. And then have him make the run. But then I chickened out and just decided to throw some daggers at him and get him to run after me anyways. So he's taking the bait. This is actually... Um, it's actually quite difficult. Run right over the statue. This is pretty safe if you get well back and you have to stay out of the way of his breath attack because he will do the breath attack right through here. And I'm trying to whack him with the Bloodhound's Fang skill. And people talk, in, you know, some. Elden Ring elitists talk about cheesing the game, you know, like like for example in this situation they would call like this cheesing the game because I'm in a no-go zone, right? And I'm gonna like use my bow to kill him. Um I disagree. Because there are so many situations in the game where the game cheeses you. It's like it it attacks you from places where you can't get to, or in some cases, it will attack you through walls when it's not supposed to. Like, for example, if I got too close to that wall there, even if I was behind the wall, if he did a melee attack, it would go right through the wall and get me. So, in my humble opinion, there is no cheese in this game. It's like, whatever it takes, fight fire with the fire. The game cheats, so I'm going to cheat. What the hell? This is not a cheat anyways, you know. From the military tactic point of view, this is simply shooting from cover. <laughs> but, anyways, this is what I would do if you're following this walkthrough. You're probably like really low on resources. It's the best way to do this. Make sure you stay off to one side so his breath attack can't get you. I <laughs> like that. You see? See what I mean? Technically speaking, his breath attack shouldn't be able to get me. It should be hitting the wall above. But, went right through the wall. Just die already. Uh oh, ran out of ran out of ammunition. There we go. Down and out. We own Stormville Castle. We own this bitch. 
So if you follow this walkthrough, you now have the run of the place. Enjoy it. Because as soon as you rest at a side of grace, it's all going to go away. <laughs> but for the moment, we own this place. And I'm 20,000 runes richer. Check it out, I earned 20,000 runes wiping everybody out. Because I started out literally with zero runes, as you saw. And here's the smithing stone that I missed. And w except for the peripheral boss fights, I believe that is every single pickup in Stormville Castle. Done. And all the enemies are dead. Ha <laughs> ha! Now you can do your victory dance. There's the Godric boss fight. The victory dance slack. No? Too tired? Okay, hey, thanks a lot for watching! And if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, post a comment, and I'll see you next time when we start uh, cleaning up all the peripheral boss fights and then we take on Godric the Grafted. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1, that's all. That's all it takes, alright? Thanks a lot, really appreciate it.